Everyone in this picture aged so well, except for Faba. Uh, Lola everyone, Trayman1 here, we're back with another Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review. Today we are covering episode 116, Lily and the Mechanical Princess. So I'm going to get into the summary and my review. There was a lot of stuff to go down in today's episode, so yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. The episode begins with this really nice moment of Ash and all of his Pokemon eating and getting ready to go to the school. Right after that, we cut to the Eighth of Paradise. The episode says no time to get right into the action, where Lily, Gladion, and Faba are looking for Ma's paperwork. Faba ends up crying tears of joy as he knows that Ma is still alive and still out there somewhere. As they look for paperwork, they end up finding this image of young Wick, Lucimi, Mon, and Faba. And this image really, really surprised me because I did not expect to see, you know, Faba look like this. I was like, wow, Faba looked cool. Wick looked really young. So did Lucimi. Lucimi kind of looked like Lily in this picture. So it was really cool seeing, you know, the Eighth of Paradise members really young. And it was cool to see, you know, just that comparison. Right after that, the episode cuts to Loose Meme looking at pictures of her family, Mon, Lily, Gladion, and herself. And starting to have flashbacks to that day when he fell into the ultra wormhole. We get to see a younger Loose Meme being carried away by Wick and Faba as, you know, she's basically trying to go and save Mon from the wormhole. But Mon is taken away by what looks to be Nihilego. I'm not too sure on this scene. First off, it doesn't even look like the average ocean wormhole that we would normally see. I don't know what happened. Maybe Mon got taken somewhere else, maybe to another dimension. I don't know what this is. It's an interesting looking portal, and it does look to be Nihilego taking Mon away. But man, Sun and Moon does a great job with these little like flashback scenes where it's like, it's really amazing how they handle these. I remember the first one we got with Lily, with Type No, freaking with Sophocles and the Minions. These scenes are really, really nice, and I really do like these. But Burnett ends up coming in trying to cheer Lucimim up, and we get to see a flashback of right after Glenow finished his Pony Island trials, of him coming to his mother telling her that their father is still alive, and this is the most happy that we've ever seen Gladion like I was so shocked like wow Gladion is really excited and even Burnett says that herself that this is the most happy she's ever seen him. Lucy Meme ends up then deciding to take Lily and Gladion to Ma's old room at their a melee melee house. Now I'm just wondering why is Ma's room so secret in this house because they had to pull this secret book and basically the door opens up like a Dexter's laboratory type of thing. I think that's what this is basically supposed to be like where this was his lab, like where he used to, you know, do his studies. Because as we find out, he worked on a special Pokemon in this room. We get a nice and emotional scene of Lucimi telling Lillian Gladion that this was Ma's old room. This is where he did most of his work. Just everything about Ma that they didn't know about him. They even end up finding Ma's old Z-Ring, which was actually in a drawer in his room. Lucimi mentions to them that Ma actually got his Z-Ring when he took on Hala's grand trial on Mele Mele Island. Gladion ends up telling Lily that she should keep the Z-Ring. And this is where Lily ends up going to a cabinet and opening up and finding Magirna. Lucimi ends up telling Lily that Ma thought it was a great idea for them to get Magirna because Magirna was built... For a princess, and Mon was thinking, our princess has just been born, so it would be a great idea for Magirna to take care of Lily. Sadly, Mon never finished the project, as we know he got taken away in the ocean wormhole shortly after this. We then cut to a scene of everyone at Hala's house, basically talking about this old Z ring and how great of a trainer Mon was. I really like the scene because we got to see a young Hala as well, and it was really interesting to see this. And that Mon's Pokemon was a Zoroark, which is really cool because we don't end up seeing Zoroarks too much. It's also important to mention that Lucimi said after Mon got taken away in the Ultra Wormhole, she doesn't know what happened to Zoroark. Zoroark didn't go in the Wormhole with Mon, but Zoroark actually stayed at the Eighth of Paradise or at their house with them. It's just Lucimi was grieving so much, she didn't know what to do. And Zoroark was also grieving and ended up leaving. Basically, I'm guessing to go look for Mon. And that Lily and Gladion were the only ones to keep her, you know, well, 
healthy and, you know, from not going crazy like she does in the game. Which is really cool to see the contrast in Loose Meme in the games and Loose Meme in the anime. It shows that her family was the one that really changed how she turns, like how her story goes. Also, this would lead to an interesting arc of Gladion trying to find Zoroark. I could see Zoroark joining Gladion for the Alola League as another member on his team, which would be really cool. Lily ends up asking Hala if she could keep the Z-Ring, and Hala says this, If you can perform the Z-Move right in front of me, I'll let you keep it. Lily ends up perfectly performing the Z-Move poses, and we get a really nice animated shot of Lily doing this. The Z-Power even ends up generating and flowing onto Vulpix. It looks like she's about to use the Z-Move until... The Z-Move fails because she's not really strong enough yet to use it. And like all the other trainers, we always get to see training before they use the Z-Move. We've seen this before with Ash and his Lycan Rock where they had to train to perfect the Rockium Z. We've seen this many times, so it, it makes sense. Z-Moves take a lot. You got to fully practice and learn how to use it in order to be able to, you know, fully bring out the full power. This is where Hala decides to let Lily keep the Z-Ring. At least until Mon gets back so she can practice her Z-move and hopefully fully be able to use the ICM Z. Also, because Sophocles saw Lily use her Z-move, well, almost use her Z-move, he gets inspired to use Z-moves as well. Which makes sense why in a couple episodes from now, he will be participating in the Vika Vote race for the Bugium Z. Because Sophocles will also be trying to use Z-moves along with Lily. And since Sophocles is entering in the Alola League, he will be trying to get ready. Which... Kiali ends up mentioning, we will all be training every day to get ready for the Alola League. So you'll be using that Z-move in no time. Well, shortly after this, we cut back to Lily talking to Magirna. And basically, Volpix ends up noticing a quick glow from Magirna's eyes and chest. Basically, to show Magirna is still, you know, in there. You know, with a little bit of work, we will be able to bring Magirna back. Which is really cool to see. Lily ends up finding a book behind Magirna. Of basically everything about it and sees a picture of her and Magirna playing together and she starts breaking out into tears basically because you know this was supposed to be a present from her father he had so much in his mind of what he wanted Magirna to do with Lily but sadly it never came true which I understand why Lily breaks out into tears because this was her father's work and we even see Volpix is starting to tear up and getting sad as well but as Lily scrolls through the book, she starts to see more things like on how Magirna is built and everything about it. And ends up telling Lusamim and Gladion that she will work hard to fully rebuild Magirna and take care of it when she does. The episode basically ends off with how Mon found this Magirna, indicating that there's multiple Magirnas out there because he mentions how this one was rusted and all. So I'm guessing other Magirnas are still like that yellow, red color and that this one since, you know, it was just left for scrap, it became rusted. So that's interesting to see as well. And we get to see Lily one more time thinking about Magirna and her father as she will strive to rebuild it. What I really like about this episode is that Lily finally found a new goal. Because throughout the series, her goal was this. Overcome, you know, her fear of touching Pokemon. She overcame that in episode 50. Then we come around to around episode... 80 something I believe and that's what she's trying to think all right everyone has these amazing goals but what am I gonna do basically you know she she has achieved her first few goals but she's not done growing which is now why she's has a new goal to fully rebuild Magirna and find her father and I really do believe that this is gonna be an amazing story arc for Lily in the series probably being the final story arc in the series as well you know seeing that this is kind of near the end and the Lola League is on the way. I really like the animation in this episode, seeing the uh, Lola Vulpix and Lily go full force in that Z move. That Z move was animated amazingly. And I was hoping that we have got to see the full thing happen too as well, but sadly we didn't, which makes sense. It's good development to see, you know, okay, Lily's at one point, she's training. Now she has to get stronger and be able to use the Z move. And I have a theory as well. As we know, we've only seen Z-Form Lily once in the anime, and that's when things got serious with the Sogaleo arc. I believe that once Lily both fully masters the Z-Move, maybe if she gets her own Z-Ring, and when Vulpix evolves, this is when she will become Z-Form Lily fully for the rest of the series. I could definitely see that happening. Yeah, I know Lily's been staying in her, you know, her regular outfit for the most of the majority of the series, 
But I feel like when she gets her Z ring, like her own Z ring, and be able to master Z moves, then she'll become Z form Lily fully because it would make sense. You know, she can't be Z form Lily without her Z ring and Z moves. So I do believe that this could end up happening, you know, as the final character growth in Lily's arc. Since in the games, Maul normally stays at the Pokemon Pelego, I wonder if they're going to handle, you know, Maul as he doesn't remember anything, you know, that maybe they're going to try to talk to him and he just doesn't remember. Because in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Lucimeme and Gladeon just let Maul go because he doesn't remember and he's happier now. So just imagine this happening in the anime where Maul just doesn't remember Maybe he started already started a new family because this was a lot of years ago. That would be really heartbreaking to see, especially because Lily and Gladion have been so passionate about this. But Sun and Moon has really done a great job with these type of sad stories, and I could see them end up doing something like this. Where, you know... Ah, goodness gracious, I'm just trying to think about it. Like, wow, just imagine this happening. Especially because they're building this up so much with... Since the Pony Island arc where they found out Mon's still alive. This episode there, you know, trying to figure out where, both where is Mon and also rebuild Magirna, and Lily getting her Z-ring and everything. And even possibly finding Zoroark. With all of this stuff going on, if they do find Mon and Mon doesn't want to go back or he does, just doesn't remember, that would be really sad. Because all that they've been going through, all this hard work that they've been trying to reach, you know, it would be like a... Not all stories will have a happy ending type of situation, which would be really sad. But at the same time, I could end up seeing Mon possibly remembering as well. And end up finally going back home with his family. Either way could happen. I feel like Sun and Moon is going to go with the, he doesn't remember. He started a new family and, you know, that's just going to be how it ends. Gladon keeps Zorok and everything. But if they do end up pulling this other way, I could really, really, I would really like that as well. Either story that they can go with, I'm okay with. Because this is really a great arc in itself that they're building up to. In the comment section down below, let me know what you all believe Mon is going to, you know. Do you believe that he's going to go back with his family and finally be happy ever after? Or do you believe that he won't remember he started a new family and they're just going to have to hit us with a, you know, not all stories in with a happy ending type of moment. I can see either way happening. Please let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Thank you all for watching. This has been a great episode. It's and it's really it's a really nice setup for Lily development. I could see many many new things coming with Lily as the series progresses as well. We got to see really nice development between Gladion and Lucime. I could see Gladion having an episode devoted to looking for Zorok as well and joining his team. Thank you all for watching. In the comment section down below, let me know what you guys thought. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Trade Man One. Peace out.